Okay, so that whole process of resting potential, action potential, electrotonic potential, and the combination of those three things, that's the electrical part of, this, of the signal transmission. The chemical part is when the, um, the calcium comes into the uh, synaptic terminal and it releases the synaptic vesicles. So when we say electrical chemical signal transmission, that's what we mean. It's a combination of the two. The electrical signal goes down, it releases chemicals in this, into the synaptic vesicle. Those chemicals are going to affect the next cell. Those chemicals are going to affect the next cell by sending a stop signal or a go signal. Remember at the beginning of this, we talked about stop signals and go signals. Remember that? So the chemicals are the, that, that are going to be, that are, are released from one cell ending to another are going to somehow affect the postsynaptic cell. Those chemicals that are released are going to somehow affect the next cell. That is signal transmission. The fact that it affects the next cell is how it transmits the signal. So it might send a stop signal. It might send a go signal. But that is the chemical part of electrochemical signal transmission. Do you understand that? Sure. The electrical part of signal transmission is when it, it happens in a few stages. The first stage is this. Cells, postsynaptic cells, postsynaptic neurons receive stop signals or go signals from different presynaptic sources. Depending on how those add up, if the inside of the cell becomes negative enough, it sends out an action potential. It initiates an action potential. The action potential will travel down an axon until it's, its logical conclusion, which is the axon terminal. In the case of myelinated axons, the action potential is going to only happen at the unmyelinated parts. So it's going to start off with action potential it's going to switch to electrotonic potential under the myelinated part of the axon. It's then going to go again, moving forward with action potential, electrotonic potential under the myelin. Action potential to move the signal forward, electrotonic potential at the myelin. When that electrical signal comes to its end, which is the axon terminal, it's going to open up electrically uh, gated or voltage gated calcium channels which is going to cause calcium to flow into the axon terminal. That calcium is then going to go under a process. Don't worry about that part of it. Um, and it's going to go on into a process which is going to cause the synaptic vesicles to fall from where they are to the presynaptic membrane. That presynaptic, uh, that synaptic vesicle kind of floating near the presynaptic membrane is going to tie itself to a docking protein. That docking protein is going to help the vesicle to open up, release its contents into the synaptic uh, cleft, which is going to then cause a, uh, an effect onto the next postsynaptic neuron. Do you understand all that? Okay, that was a lot of information. Anyone confused? Sure. It will cause an effect at the, at the next uh, postsynaptic neuron. Essentially, it's going to send either a stop signal or a go signal. And the process is going to all happen all over again in the next neuron. And by the way, guys, this is a, this is a energy-consuming process, right? Because one of the signals we're going to see that works is called metabotropic, which is requiring energy, okay? So there's two kinds of signals that can that can happen. Okay, stop signals and go signals. And there are two types of stop signals and go signals. There's ionotropic and metabotropic. We're going to look at that in a minute. But do you all understand the electro part of the uh, of signal transmission and the chemical part? You all get that? No? Who doesn't get that? Read it back to me, yes. But you have to be a doctor, big voice.
Right. Oh, the, the vesicle drops. The vesicle containing neurotransmitter drops. Mm -hmm. They kind of hang out there, right? It has to. It has to connect to a docking protein on the presynaptic membrane. Docking protein, like a dock. Okay, dock. So. Presynaptic membrane. It just releases its contents. It just it just releases it. I didn't say diffusion. Just so it's gonna it's gonna diffuse. It's just gonna release it, and it's gonna the the, the chemicals are gonna kind of like drop into and then to the next membrane. Sorry, to the next to the postsynaptic uh, neuron. It's just gonna drop to the next neuron when it's gonna affect the next neuron from there. Okay. Right. Yep. Okay, good. More positive, more positive. Underneath the myelin, yeah, good. Mm -hmm. Nodes of Ranvier, right. Electrotonic, electrotonic. Chemical portions also what happens across the synaptic membrane. So that release of chemicals across the membrane is also the chemical portion of the electrochemical signal transmission. <clears throat> That's it. Good. You're, you're, you're good. You're good. You're good. That's a, you, you summarized it really well. Um, excellent. Perfect. So just, just everyone, you know, copy which... No, no, don't do that. Make your own notes. Make your own notes. You know, as for calcium, as, okay, as for calcium going into the, uh, into the cell terminal and um, into the axon terminal and releasing it, don't worry about that. Just know that calcium has several functions in, in, in biology. Um, if any of you have studied, um, we don't study it in this class, the neuromuscular juncture, which is where uh, the nervous, basically um, skeletal division of the uh, efferent nervous system, where these uh, basically nerves innervate muscles, what's going to happen is when, when a signal comes through a nerve to a muscle, it's going to cause the, um, the muscles to absorb calcium, which is going to cause them to activate so calcium is going to be released, taken up in the muscle, and activate it. So, you know, and then magnesium actually calms the muscles down, the actin, the myosin. So if you, if you study other parts of biology, kind of like minerals flooding into different parts in biology is, is all over the place. But in the case of the, um, the neuron, we are looking at sodium, potassium, and, and calcium. Does that make sense to all of you? Okay. <clears throat>